Great. Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have Gregory Moore with us. He's going to teach us about franchising, and he's going to teach us a lot about changing your careers over and not having to work so hard and being able to actually do something that you love, that's meaningful, and that you also don't have to get burnt out doing. So, Greg, why don't you tell people a little about yourself, what you do, and just tell everybody, it's just, I love what you're doing. Just let us, you know, learn a little more about this because this is amazing. Thank you, Stacey. I appreciate you having me. Well, basically what I do is, is sell franchises. I mean, you know, that's the boring part, you sell franchises. What really comes down to is really it's life-changing events that I help people with. When people come to me, they're looking at the fact that they don't have enough time in their schedule to do the things that they want to do on a regular basis. They're looking down the road and they don't have enough money to retire on and they want to do something different. They want to change their lives. They are, are the, they're the hero of my story. You know, they're the, the Luke Skywalker that's out there, you know, trying to accomplish that big major goal. And I'm, I'm their Yoda that kind of helps them and guides them through that process of finding that, uh, the right path for them, and then ultimately reaching their their goal of whether it be financial freedom, a schedule freedom, or just having a little extra something on the side. Some of my folks are coming to me. They may want to get out of the corporate world altogether. They've had enough of it. They're ready to move on, and they want to take over a franchise full time. We have plenty of those. There's other people who are not quite ready. They're not. They don't really want to take that big step yet of stepping away from the corporate world because they like that paycheck every two weeks still, but they know that at some point in time. Uh, they got to get out of it or they got to have something extra. So we have passive franchises, semi-passive franchises that people can run on that. And I got my start back in franchising. Unbeknownst to me, right back when I was in high school, where I worked for uh, Taco Bell. And I actually worked for a master franchiser out of Taco Bell. And I helped uh, the lady that owned those. I helped her grow her restaurants throughout the Sacramento of California area for Taco Bell. So I found that it was just absolutely fascinating that I could walk into any Taco Bell and be run exactly the same way each and every time. I just had to make certain everybody was on track, doing what they were supposed to be doing, uh, treating them right. And we built up sales and we helped them grow. I went on to become a restaurant manager for another restaurant chain that went into uh, electrical engineering and physics. I worked for semiconductor industry for about 15 years as well. And then when I started getting my master's degree, I read Robert Kiyosaki's books, Rich mm -hmm. Dad, Poor Dad. And then that got me thinking that there's got to be something better out there than, you know, working seven to five, you know, five days a week, sometimes six days a week. Uh, I needed some, really some control over my life, some schedule flexibility, time to do things I wanted to do. So I got out of the corporate world, got into franchising, ran my own franchise for a while. It was the uh, Schoolie Mitchell telecommunications consulting franchise. Uh, Dennis Schooley was great. He really set the stage for what franchising was all about to me, helping me grow, helping me build that up. And I did that for a while. And then I decided that, you know, I really like helping people and business owners, which is what I was doing with School of Mitchell. But I really want to help other people realize their dreams like I had realized mine. So at that point in time, I could do whatever I want, whenever I want, had my own schedule on that. Uh, the money was much better coming in than working for corporate world. I mean, the harder I work, the more money I make. I didn't have to wait for, you know, that uh, evaluation every six months to see how I was doing. My customers evaluated me every single day, every single minute. So I always knew where I was at with them. That was good. So that got me into it. And I've been doing that for about 10 years now. Finally got around to writing a book, uh, my Wall Street Journal bestselling book. Quite surprised that that came out as a Wall Street Journal bestseller. I was just trying to help people learn more about franchising including some real world stories in there about how I have helped other people go through the process of investigating franchises, making sure that they, we avoided the mistakes uh, that some people do. And it's just a complete guide to get you through the entire process. But I was uh, really quite thrilled and really just shocked that so many people bought it, that it became a Wall Street Journal bestseller. I was just very thankful. That's amazing. I congratulate you. That, that's wonderful. You know, I find many people are um, very scared of change. And, you know, especially now with, you know, we were discussing shortly before when COVID came 
And after it, it, it settled down, life had changed so dramatically for people and people were looking for different careers. A lot of people were working remotely from home. Uh, life had just did a three, three, 360 and it was it was a, it was a big thing for a lot of people. And a lot of people I know lost their jobs and they were looking for new careers and they were burnt out. You know, previously their old jobs burnt them out. And that's one of the main things that we suffer from in our country. So many people get burnt out. Now, when changing over to a new career and so something like franchising, where a lot of people really might not know where to begin, they might not know how to do it. They might be scared of change. And they might be scared of failure. And so how do you go about explaining to people, you know, from step one, how do they get into it? You know, is it easy to do? You know, tell us a little more about the process. Excellent question, Stacey, because yes, you're absolutely correct. A lot of my folks are, uh, are scared because it is something new. It is something different that they've never done before. So the first thing I do is get rid of some of the misconceptions about the franchising itself. When we go out, and we go driving around, we see those franchises. We see those, you know, McDonald's or Taco Bell's, the restaurants, uh, Supercuts, Great Clips. We see all those and we think that's what a franchise is. Well, that is a brick and mortar franchise. That's only one section of the franchising world. So they think they got a building, they got to build it out. They got to put a lot of money into it. They have to have a lot of employees. Not always the case. Again, that's just the brick and mortar aspect of it. Great opportunities there, easy to run, easy to build up more of them, a little bit more of an investment. If you want something on the other side, the services industry, that's a little bit less of an investment. So with the brick and mortar, you're probably looking at 250,000, 300,000 or more to get built out. Uh, and you've got a few employees that you got to work with. You go into the service industry, now you're looking at 150,000, 100,000 to 200,000 investment range on there. Not as many as employees, and especially as you mentioned with COVID, we did see some issues with some of those brick and mortars uh, businesses out there that some of them had to close down, the non-essential ones. They had issues uh, with opening up the restaurants, uh, the fitness ones. Uh, they did come up with all sorts of different ideas to keep themselves open during COVID. But on the other end of the spectrum, the services industry, those are essential. A lot of those are essential services, like corporate cleaning, for instance. They clean out offices. Since people did have to go to the office with some of them, you still had some offices open. You needed those offices cleaned even more often than you did before to sanitize right. them, to get rid of all those germs there on that. We still had to have electrical services. So you had to have your electrical services ready. You still had to have uh, HVAC, your air, con air conditioning and heating. That's an essential service that had to stay in operation. You still have your plumbing. You have to have your plumbing services, uh, restoration still. And we still had a lot of home improvement going on with there. So with COVID, as you mentioned, there was a lot of changes, but a lot of people were staying home, not necessarily going out on vacation. So they spent a lot of money on improving their house. So we see franchises then really coming up and really taking off. So as you were asking, you know, what are some of the issues? What are some of the fears that people come across? One of them is how much do I have to invest on that? So the services industry don't necessarily have to invest a lot. So in money investing is the biggest thing that people are concerned about. The other thing that people are concerned about a lot is time investment. Do I have to put a lot of time in it? Do I have to quit my job? Well, no, you don't have to quit your job on that. Well, I was an engineer. We, I actually went in with another uh, engineer and we bought the dry cleaners. It was not a franchise, it was a private business, but we got a dry cleaners, we had storage units, we had rental properties. We ran those semi-passive. So we just had managers doing it. With the franchising system, you can do the same thing is that you have a manager running, they're called semi-passive franchises. And some of them have management teams that run it for you, so they're passive. So the big things, time investment, money investment, those sort of things are, are variable on that one. The other thing is that uh, people are worried about, as you mentioned, Stacey, whether or not they're going to succeed. How successful? What's the failure? So when we're looking at that, and when I'm talking to my people, that's one of the things that I ask them is, you know, do you want to get into an emerging franchise? So like Orange Theory, if you just started out with Orange Theory back in the day, you didn't have a lot of them. So you right. were taking a chance. It shot up and took, you know, took off, but nobody mm -hmm. knew it was going to happen. So are you right. that kind of person where you can think, I want to hit that emerging franchise and I want to take off with it and I'll take my chance of whether or not it actually emerges. Or right. you want to take a step back and say, 
I want one that's been in operation for 10 years. I want one that's got 100 or more franchisees on it. You know, I want that entire team to help me out because franchising is a team effort. You're part of that team and that team's going to help you grow and help you build that business up. So we have to sit down and talk about exactly where is your risk level at. Right. I think that's a great point. And, you know, when people invest in these things, you know, like franchises, service franchises, you know, brick and mortar, if they are worried that they might not have the funds, uh, is someone like you who is a consultant for franchise, do you actually have resources that they can go to to actually get them help financially? Yes, we certainly do. We have people that fund franchises on a regular basis. So fund oh. franchises, yeah, they, that's all they do is they fund franchises. So funding them is actually comparatively easy to do. Oh. Franchises, yeah, franchises have a proven record of success. So the so my funding people to do it, they already know that franchises got a proven record of success. Part of that record of success is being able to pick out the right, right franchisees. So they know they've done it before. Or they know they picked it out. So there's no guarantee that if you start looking into a franchise, that franchise is going to say, yeah, we'll sell you a franchise. But they're not there to sell you a franchise. They're there to find a great partner in their system. So in doing so, that leads to a good success rate and that leads to the funding people making it easy for it. What it comes down to is simply uh, my candidate's credit score. As long as you got a good credit score, funding a franchise is easy. Many different people in many different ways, not necessarily with your standard SBA loan. You, If you're stepping away from your job, you can do a 401k rollover. You can do an IRA rollover. So if you're not wanting to go into debt, then you could just use that retirement money. That's what I did with mine. That's more of a personal decision for most people, whether or not you want to use your retirement money or whether or not you want to use other people's money to invest in that franchise and grow it. Wow. You know, I didn't realize that there were so many options because when you think of franchises, the first thing that comes in your head is big investment. And I think that's what scares people. And they, I don't think people realize that there are a lot of options. You know, if you really want to do this, there are a lot of different options that you could take in order to, you know, pursue your dream. So that's a great, I didn't know that. That's a great statement. Very true, Stacey. And just one thing to add on there. Uh, it doesn't matter as far as a service industry franchise or a brick and mortar franchise as far as how much money you can make. So just because you're investing less money doesn't mean you're going to make less money. And just because you're investing more money doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make more money. They're just different franchises. Both have opportunities, make some good money. It's just more of a matter of what you as my candidate sees yourself running and helps you reach the goals that you're trying to reach. Wow. You know, I, I I wonder, like, do you ever get clients that, you know, are fixated on maybe doing one specific type of franchise, but they could actually have better options if they go a, a different direction? Uh, do you actually make people see, you know, well, you have experience in this field or, you know, you could probably make more money if you go into the, in this instead of this? Because sometimes what people people don't realize is that they have one thing fixated in their mind, but they don't realize that if they go another route, they could do so much better and it might be even less stressful in certain areas. Uh, that's a good you... point, Stacey, and that's exactly what I do. Was I... Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to ask you how you feel I... about that. Okay, yeah, you're exactly right, Stacey. There, there are people that come in and they've got some ideas to begin with first and they want to go with their ideas. What I do is, as part of the process, is educate them on franchising and the different industries that are out there. We do look at where have you been, where are you at now, where do you want to be? So when we're looking at where have you been, we're looking at your background, we're looking at your experiences, we're looking at what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with on that. So I come up with a few different options. I come up with five, six different options for them. So they may be fixated on one industry, but what I'll do is I'll bring back other franchises where I know, and I talk to franchises quite often, so I know who these franchises are looking for in a successful franchise or a successful franchisee. What I need to do is who are you looking for as my candidate in a, in a successful franchise? And I do the matchup. So I know who these franchisors are looking for. So I know I can bring them back in different industries and I can say, you know, you just, you're looking at this one, you like this one, but it's nice to have something to compare it to. Let's do a compare and contrast 
And let's just take a look at these other industries. Let's get an education about the different types of franchising. And then you make up your mind, but together we'll investigate them. I like that idea, you know, because uh, I, you know, sometimes people don't realize that, you know, they might actually, their strengths might lie in a different area. And, you know, they might have interests in one area, but then their strengths are in, in, a, in a different place. And, you know, it's better to go, I would think, right, in, in where your strengths are, you know, and where you have a little bit more knowledge and not so much what you like, you know, it's really what you're good at. Well, I an interesting one that I could that I could tell you about the gentleman. He came, uh, he went from the East Coast over into Oklahoma, and he was an IT specialist on there. So he said, "These folks in Oklahoma aren't paying me as much as I did over there on the East Coast. I need to find an IT franchise that's going to so I can make some more money, uh, more than I'm doing now. And you know, just doing it myself, running my own business." But I said, "Sounds mm -hmm. great. You know, let's take a look at your background. What's your interest? What do you like doing? What do you like having fun with?" So one of the things we came up with is he really enjoyed cars. He fixed cars all the time on a regular basis. So we actually put him, eventually we actually put him into an automotive repair shop. Oh, wow. All things instead of an IT. Because yeah. I said, let's go, I'll bring back IT. Here's your IT franchise. Let's take a look at those. See how much they make. See what you got to do. Let's take a look at the automotive franchise. You like cars. You like working on them. You're not going to be doing that. You're going to be running the business, but it's something right. that you like and you feel good about. So just take a look at it. Investigate it. You can always just say no, but let's just take a look at it. And he ended up going in that round. said, that's the one. Happily ever after. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Now, what motivated you to write this book? And to, I'll tell everybody the title and where they can find it also. Ah, it's called Real Freedom. My franchises are worth considering and how they can be used for building wealth. After 10 years in the industry of doing this, I I get a lot of the same questions over and over again. So I thought, mm -hmm. I'm just going to put a book out there. That way, every time somebody comes to me and wants to get into franchising, I just send them a copy of my book. They can read it. What it is, is it's a breakdown of what you and I will go through together and how to investigate those franchise systems, what to look for, what mistakes to avoid, how, who to contact, Franchise, we also have franchise attorneys, great franchise attorneys you can look at, funding, the different funding aspects on there. What to look for in yourself as far as your background, what motivates you, what brings you into franchising this time, why are you considering it? It goes through all that process and step-by-step -step process. Along the way, I have real world, real world examples of people I have worked with that I've helped them avoid some of these mistakes along the way. So... From start to finish, it'll take you through the whole process there, what to look for, what to avoid, what mistakes to avoid, how to get the right funding, how to get the right attorneys, what to look for in the franchise disclosure documents, what to look for in the franchise agreements, how a franchise attorney can help you avoid all sorts of different issues and the different funding aspects of it. Uh, but it's really good. That sounds great. Now, with a lot of times when people are starting a new business, it takes one to two years for them to build up a business and get it really going where it's successful. Now, with franchise, and especially if you're going into something that has a foundation, um, is, is, it, is it a quicker process or does it take a while before you actually are feeling the, the net worth and the profit and the profit starts drawing in? Uh Good point, Stacey. A lot, a lot of what my people ask me as well at the same time. So two different ways you can go there if when you're getting into a business. You get it yourself or you start one yourself or you start a franchise on that. If you start one yourself, you've got to do everything. You keep all the money. So one thing we haven't mentioned yet with franchising, there's a franchise fee involved in that. Generally speaking, one-time franchise fee of $50,000, give or take. Mm -hmm. Royalties ongoing. Uh, that keeps the franchise in business, generally speaking, between 5 and 10%. So right. if you go into a business that you sell, you keep everything. But mm -hmm. you do everything yourself. You go into a franchise system on that. You are paying those fees, but you've got a team there that will help you out. They've already gone through that process. They have already have a proven model and a step-by-step -step process on, to take you through. So what you're looking for with that franchise is to get you to where you want to be two to three years quicker than if you were to do it yourself. Uh, but a more direct answer to your question, even with a franchise system, you still have that buildup period on there. 
So it will still be a little while. And that's going to depend greatly on the type of franchise that you get into. So if you're looking at something like a, a fiber new franchise, leather, vinyl, plastic repair, training right. quick. Uh, uh, you're doing it yourself. So you generally start out as owner operator. So you can start bringing money in within a few months on something okay. like that. You get into a, a super cuts, a great place. Now you've got to find the physical location. You've got to do the build out. So now you've got six months, nine months, down the road, you've got more an investment going into it. So with fiber new, you're looking at a hundred thousand. With the supercuts, maybe two fifty. Both great businesses, absolutely amazing. But you've got a little bit more time period with that brick and mortar where you've got to get the build out. You've got the employees in there, so you've got a little bit more overhead that you've got to overcome before you actually start making a profit. Whereas with the fiber new one, you pretty much don't have those overhead, don't have the expenses. Your own truck, you don't need an office. So your expenses are low, no overhead, start bringing in money right away. So it depends on the franchise. Okay. So if you're starting and you want to do it, you want to keep all the profits, but then you have to still have, have a, you still have to have a team and you have a payroll and you have a, other expenses that you have to think of, other costs that are going to endure over time as you're starting this franchise from start from the beginning but the other one is where you they have a team to provide you correct that will help you along the way but you just pay out a, 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 a franchise fees but they pretty much have your back the whole time it seems right exactly right Stacy so they help you so when you get that franchise business and you got a team of people that's going to help you grow already they've already got the policies procedures in place now if you need to hire people they're going to show you how to do it. If you need to find a manager, they're going to show you how to do it. Where do you find them? What do you look for? How do you do it? You're going to go out and do the work, but you're never guessing what do I do next? Marketing right. material, advertising material, all of that you should expect with the franchise. Always expect that. In addition to that, as you're going through the process, you're going to talk to other franchisees along the way before you invest in any franchise. So you're going to validate that all that information that the franchise told you about their, how they're going to help you, how they're going to support you, you're going to validate all that information. But that's what you're looking for a franchise to do for you is have that team. So you're never guessing what you do next. You get up and running quickly, just like that. You're off and running. I, I think personally, I would like that better because, you know, I think it can be very difficult and very stressful when you have to do it from scratch all by yourself because certain methods that you may think might work, especially in the advertising area, may not work and advertising can also be very expensive so when you're invested in advertising you want to make sure you do it right i would think <laughs> very, yeah very true because they've already done that they've already gone through the trials and tribulations on that when they first started out with that so they know what works they know what doesn't work uh, but they'll still give you the creativity to do things right. on your own don't think that you're just stuck in a in a rut you just you have to do that and you've got no creativity i had a lady that was in um uh, Las Vegas area. She worked for the gaming industry, uh, hotels mm -hmm. on that. She got into a tutoring franchise over there in Las Vegas Valley. And she said, when she first started, she said, you know, you guys aren't hitting up any of the hotels or motels around the area. Why is that? And they said, it's just not something we've ever done before. She said, well, I'd, I'd, like, I'd like to do that. And they said, you know, go right ahead. Feel free. I mean, you're still able to do things that you want and be creative within that franchise system. They've got the processes where they show you this is what you do, if you follow our system, your chances of success are that much greater. Uh, she, right. didn't want to. Uh, she tried it. it. It didn't work out. But and then she just went back to doing the way, you know, they said they laid it out for. Her, uh, and then she did fine after that. Uh, but it just goes to show that you still have some creativity that you can bring to the table. Right. That. They just have everything lined out. Say, this is what we've done. If you follow this, your chances of success are that much greater. Right. And is there like different companies take a certain different type of percentage where some, some companies might take, let's say, 15 percent. Some companies might take 20. Some companies might take 25 percent of the royalties. Is it, is it different each each type of company they're dealing with? Or is it yes, what it's going to depend on on those percentages is what they do for you. OK, so the more they do for you. So if you go into the staffing industry, for instance. With staffing, you do a lot of temporary staffing. 
Mm -hmm. So the reason you could be better in a franchise system than if you were to do it yourself, because you have to foot the bill for that temporary staffing person before that company pays you back for that. Okay. So you send somebody a temporary staff, you're paying their wages, you build the company, the company uh, that you're working with pays you on a monthly basis or whatever. With the staffing franchise, they're going to foot the bill for that temporary employee. So you don't have to come up with your cash to do it. They do it. So they're going to charge a little bit more. So then you'll be on the higher end. You'll be at 10, 12, 15, okay. something like that. But it's always depending on what that franchise is going to do for you. As you're looking into it, you just have to determine on, on your own uh, and talking to other franchisees, is it worth it to you right. to get into a franchise? Do they give you any help with location? Because sometimes location can be key where you decide to, you know, have your business. Is it, you know, is visibility a, play a big part in success? Like where you locate your franchise or is it basically the advertising that really brings people or does it depend on what industry you're getting into? You're right on that, Stacey. It depends on what industry you're getting into. But if you get into a business that is a brick and mortar, Two things you need to expect from them since you're not an expert at it is one, as you pointed out, Stacey, what's the best location? Second one is you're not going to buy that spot. You're going to lease it. So you want them to do lease negotiation for you. So when oh, you're okay. at brick and mortar, you want to look, right? So you want to look at who's going to help you find that location. Now they're going to work with you on that. Generally, in my experience, they'll come up with two or three different locations and they'll ask you on that here's two or three locations any one that you like better than the others but these are the ones that we found have the traffic have the visibility so these are good ones and then lease negotiation you're not going to be necessarily an expert in lease negotiation so you right. want a franchise system that's going to go no other food franchises come can come into that strip mall no other uh pizza franchises taco franchises whatever it is here so oh, okay they got to have that in there as well so you're not competing with that yes mm -hmm. on it those ones, yes, for the services industry, what you're going to be looking for there is that. So brick and mortar, you build it and they will come. General right. thing, right? It's right there. Everybody <laughs> sees it. Yay! <laughs> with the services industry, with the services industry, your clients don't necessarily know you exist until they need yeah. you. So when they need you, they've got to, you've got to have that marketing and advertising out there that drive people to you when that need arises. Now, okay. as you mentioned before, with the amount of royalties that you go within what they'll do for you, you might want to look for then a uh, franchise that has a call center. So when mm -hmm. that need arises, your client's calling, and rather than you having to pick up that phone on a regular basis, now you've got a call center that's going to do it for you. They're going to schedule right. that appointment, and there might be various things they do on that call center. They might you know, give you quotes over the, over the phone, they may gather some information, they may just schedule an appointment. So what you're looking for is what is that franchise going to give back uh, compared to the amount of royalties they get. But as you pointed out, your main question was, what do you do for advertising marketing? You really want that advertising marketing for that services industry to drive people to you when that need arises. So you're at the top of the list. That's that's really good information to know, because I think a lot of people sometimes don't, you know, they're they're not sure exactly you know, where to go and, and what to do and, you know, what's the best way. And, and I, I don't, re I th don't think a lot of people realize all the help that they can actually get if they choose the franchise end of it. True. Very true. Because a, a lot of the that's, that's, what you, that's what you expect and that's what you pay for. So you're going to pay right. more. So you're not doing it yourself. You're paying for it. So this is what you expect from them. because you're paying those royalties what am i going to get exactly so you don't have doing. to you don't have to really be an expert you can actually learn like if you go into a a, a a developed franchise you know you don't have to always be it seems like an expert in the field you could have some idea but it, the franchise can probably educate you as you go along and give you some background information and and kind of teach it to you you know in a sense also so do you have to be an expert in that industry in order to be successful? Not at all. Uh, not at all. Uh, take the handyman, for instance, Mr. Handyman over there at uh, Neighborly Group, the largest uh, yeah. home services franchise company in the U.S. Uh, do not send us handymen. 
is there mm -hmm. is there a little, we don't want handyman they love handyman handyman are great but the issue you run into the challenge you run into is handyman want to do the work they're like yeah, let's, <laughs> do that. let's go in there let's get it done i do well, don't want you doing the work we want you building that business uh, right uh, it's nice that you have a great interest in it but you've got to separate yourself once you become that business owner from doing uh from working in that business you need to work on that business so what they're really looking for what most of the other franchises i would say are looking for is, is good business people that know how to work on the business and can build that business up now if that's not you and you want to be that person uh, we have many franchises for that too. So if you want to be that hands-on person, you like working with your hands, you like getting in there and doing that. There are many franchises that can do that we can put you in where you're doing the actual work and you don't have to have any employees. Uh, but mostly our franchises, it doesn't matter that you have an experience in that industry at all. They'll teach you everything you need to know. They're really looking for people who have basically an interest, who look yeah. at that franchise and say, wow, that that's awesome. I love it. Uh, I want to know all right. about that. And they will teach you how to do everything on that franchise itself and continue to support you and train you uh, and help you build your business. And you know what I noticed too, is like from speaking with many business people over the years, it's hard, I find, for business owners to separate themselves from the business where they get so involved that they don't know how to sit back and you know, either manage or watch others manage and take over. They they feel like it's their baby and they 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 put more energy than needed into the business. They end up burning themselves out because of that. And then they didn't have to in the first place. They could have been sitting back, making sure everything runs, you know, efficiently and just watching over and making sure everything runs properly and even open a second or third franchise if it's successful. But yet some people just feel like it's not going to get done if I'm not there. You know, they have that mentality. You know, I have to be there. They can't do it without me. What do you tell those people? How do you get those people to separate themselves from their business, you do whatever they need to do, and then take a step back. I told to begin with that the business should not revolve around you at all. It should not be about you. It should not revolve around you. You are not going to be inside that business, uh, playing an essential role in that business. Your role is to take a step back, have the people for it, have the people that know how to do it can operate that business then that way you've got a good exit strategy always going into a business on that you've got to be thinking about your exit strategy uh, maybe you never never want to exit maybe you want to turn it over to your kids that's fine too but always have that exit strategy in mind and to have that exit strategy in mind that business cannot revolve around you because then you can't exit it so make certain that it runs without you because the only way you're going to be able to go on vacation on a regular basis which is one of the reasons why you got into the franchise world in the first place is so you had more free time for yourself. Exactly. If the business does, yeah, the only way you can do that if the business does not revolve around you is got to operate independently of you. You guide them, you help them, you build them, you move them in the direction they should be going. Once everything's running fine, more opportunity for you to get into another business, build up another location, get another franchise, whatever it is you want to do, just spend more time with family and loved ones, but that business cannot revolve around you. Always have that extra strategy in mind so you can just step, step away, sell it off, build another one, or just do whatever you want. And I feel that's so important too, because you really, life is all about making memories with the ones you love. And, you know, when people get so involved in work, it, 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 it takes away that time that they could be spending time with the people they love. And really, you know, that's what you really want. You want to get to that point where you could actually enjoy life, enjoy your family, enjoy the people you care about and not get so involved with work where it burns you out and you can't even function because how could you come home and function and you're so burnt out and have a have a, a, a happy relationship with your family if you're so tired and burnt out from a hard day's work. So I think a franchise is an excellent idea, especially if you want to take a step back and just watch others you know, build your business and make your business successful, you know, especially when you have a team that's willing to be by your side and show you the strings and the ropes. Exactly right, Stacey. And even with the books that you you point out, there's, you know, building up your health and becoming more, you know, uh, healthy through, through natural things is 
um, also the mental aspect of it as well. He yeah. you don't have to be worried about that business or concerned about it. That, that business revolves around you when you're not there, then you're worried about it. So just like you probably point out in some of your books as well, that, you know, the mental aspect of it is that you pull yourself back, everything runs smoothly. You're a calmer, more relaxed person that way. So right. How we want you to be. Now, if you had to give people a couple of tips about getting started and how they, you know, how, you know, things that you think are important for people to know, what tips would you want to share with the audience today that you think are going to beneficial? Know what you're looking to invest. If you want to get into a business, what are you comfortable investing money-wise in that business? What are you invest? What are you comfortable investing time-wise in that business? Know that those two aspects before you start looking into a business, and then look at yourself five to ten years from now. Picture yourself where you want to be on that, and then. Putting all those three together, we can get together and we can look at franchise businesses that fit your time budget, your money budget, and we'll get you to where you want to be in the picture of your mind, what you have pictured in your mind in the next five to 10 years. So always think of those things. And you know, we can handle the rest through questions and all that later. Have you found people leaving their careers and then going into the franchise business and saying, you know, I had enough of this. And then they, they turn to do, to do the, you know, to get into the franchise business. Yeah. About 50, 50 is what I do. I have uh, about 50% investors and 50% what we call uh, corporate refugees. Uh, that are getting out <laughs> of the, the corporate world. They just, they just had enough on that. Right. So yeah, about 50, 50 on that one. And where they really want to uh, more time. I just put a guy into uh uh, kitchen remodeling franchise a few years back they stepped away from his corporate career and he, he built that one up and said cool that one's done um sold it and then got into another franchise oh and excellent doing it all over again and he left his career. so uh yep quite a few 50 50 on that oh that's wonderful i like that idea a lot you know that and it's profitable and it's less stressful than the corporate world for sure definitely now, where can we find you if people want to contact you? Oh, go ahead. Finish what you wanted to say. Oh, one thing we didn't mention, Stacey, was the fact that this is your business. So um, your exit strategy is also, you know, selling that business. Keep in mind, the business is sell for about nearly three times, uh, you know, profit on that. So you build that up to a nice profit range and you just want to sell it off after that. Many people buy uh, franchises, usually other franchisees in the system will buy your franchise from you once you get that franchise built up on that. So it's a good, you make money along the way. And then at the end, you sell it, you make even more. So it's not a bad deal. So it's it's a lot easier than trying to sell a practice or selling something like a piece of real estate. It seems like, you know, there's a need. Other people see the the potential in a franchise and they you don't you don't have to be trying to sell it for so long. It, it usually sells quickly, it seems like those franchises well, few, yes that is absolutely correct quite a few people come to me looking for resale franchises i don't always have real good resale franchises because the first thing that's going to happen is that when you tell the franchise or you're going to sell your franchise they're going to alert other franchisees that are close to you they're also doing well and say hey uh you know john over here wants to sell this franchise any any takers from you folks that are already running a very successful franchise bam just like that it usually gets bought up uh at theirs um, but occasionally I'll, I'll get a, a good resale, but most of the time it's bought up by other franchisees real quick. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. Now, where can people get in touch with you? If they want to find you, where is the easiest place to get in touch with you? Uh, you can go to my website, franchisemaven.com. That's franchise, M-A-V as in Victor, E-N.com. Uh, Greg at franchisemaven.com, or just pick up the phone and give me a call. 361-772-6401. That's great. And if people want to pick up your book and learn a little about franchise, where can they find that book? Go out to Amazon and Real Freedom, Why Franchises Are Worth Considering and How They Can Be Used for Building Wealth. Uh, just look me up. Uh, I've only got two books out there. One a co-author in, and my, that's my main one. But just look up Greg Moore, M-O-H-R on Amazon and real freedom will pop up. 
This has been amazing. You taught me so much. I, you know, I, I, I knew the concept of franchise, but I didn't know that the information you provide today was phenomenal because I did not know a lot of these things about franchising and I am pretty educated in the, in the business world, but you, you supplied a whirlwind of valuable information and it makes you really think about what you want to do for your future and think about, am I doing the right thing or is there an easier way for me to make ends meet that I don't have to stress myself out or burn myself out? And this could definitely be an option. So thank you so much for coming on the show and providing us with all this information. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, Stacey. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, oh, you're very welcome. Honor. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You have a great day. You too, Stacey. Take care.